to the Sassy Spoon. Glad to have you here in my kitchen. I'm happy to have you here and today we're going to be doing something really fun. We're going to be doing biscuits. Everybody loves biscuits. They were one of my favorite things as a child. My great grandmother used to let me help her make them. They were one of the first things I stood on a stool and got to cut out the biscuits. And um, I think you're going to really enjoy this recipe. It's very easy to do. This recipe only has three ingredients. So that's another reason I think you're gonna enjoy it. The big secret in this recipe is the texture. And that's why watching the video is very important because once you understand the texture of the biscuit dough that needs to be very gently handled, you're gonna be making better biscuits no matter what recipe you do. So this recipe is done with a food processor and it would be very, very easy to over-process the um, biscuits. So you just have to be very careful not to over-process them. Treat them very, very gently, even more than a pie crust. So we're gonna get to work on it in just a minute. All you're gonna need is butter and buttermilk and self-rising flour. Now let's talk about that flour for just a minute. If you live anywhere where you can buy white lily self-rising flour, I suggest you find it. You can order it on Amazon and if you're anywhere in the South, you should be able to buy it. It's a soft wheat flour and I believe and most everybody I know believes that it is a better biscuit flour because it is soft wheat and it makes fluffier biscuits. If you buy the other flours that are northern hard wheat, they're great for bread and they're really good for pasta and lots of other things, but they don't make the best biscuits. So do seek it out if you can. Um, I, when I lived in Hawaii, I used to have it shipped to me <laughs> on Amazon and I would um, bring it home with me when I went to the mainland and I would have people bring it to me when they came to visit me <laughs> uh, just because it is so different. But there are some other brands besides White Lily. That's just my preferred brand. Um, but there, but if you get a Southern brand of flour, that's what you want. Now they do make a regular all-purpose flour and you can add what you need, uh, baking soda and baking powder and salt to the flour to make it self-rising flour. So you don't have to buy the self-rising. But the self-rising makes it really easy and it's a perfect recipe this way. Uh, but you can make it self-rising. There's a, a recipe to make it self-rising and I'll add that in the directions if you want. So uh, make sure at in all of my videos, at the bottom of the video, there is a recipe under the directions and there are some other links there for you too. So I will even put a link there for you to buy white lily flower on Amazon if you want. So anyway, let's get going and have some fun today making biscuits. Okay, and we're ready to make biscuits. So whatever kind of food processor you have, put in the blade. And like I said, if you don't have a food processor, I'm gonna have lots of other recipes for biscuits at another time. This is two and a half cups of self-rising flour. Remember what I told you about the Southern flour. But uh, again, I will have a recipe to make your own self-rising flour if you don't have it. And there are directions in how to measure flour. I put them put it in a cup. I, I tumbled the flour around in the cup, put it in a cup and leveled it off and poured it into this bigger cup. Just so you know. This recipe is so easy. So put your lid on your food processor. And we're just gonna whisk it around a couple times to kind of fluff up the flour. All right, next we have our butter cut up in two sizes. Now it's one stick of butter, but look how cute this is. 
This comes in these little half sticks now. Isn't that great? This is Land O'Lakes Unsalted Butter. I always use unsalted butter, no matter what I'm doing. Uh, this is the tinier size that we've cut up. Um, it's really tiny. When you put it in, just make sure you break it up into the tiny size. Don't let them stick together because that kind of defeats your purpose. So, I'm gonna break them all up. They're a little bigger than a pea. I'd say like the size of two peas. And the other size is about twice that size. You wanna keep this as cold as possible. You can either pre-cut it and put it in the freezer or keep it in the freezer or refrigerator until just before you're going to make these. You want it to stay very, very cold, just like in pie crust. You don't want it to be soft at all. The least, the least amount of handling is best. Again, this is all about the texture thing I was talking about. All right, now your larger pieces. Now, hopefully your food processor has a pulse. Um, on it. If it doesn't, then you're going to have to turn it on and off. Now you see how I'm kind of distributing this throughout the flour? Okay, that's all you want to do. All right, I'm just going to pulse, push pulse a couple of times. Let me wipe off my hands so they're a little buttery. flower is very fluffy. <laughs> okay. All right. The butter in there is still in fairly good sized chunks, which is exactly what we want. It's kind of like... Um, feta cheese or you know little peas and cornmeal it's not all the way mixed up if you can see that that's exactly what we want next we're going to add the um buttermilk slowly now i i'm not doing a commercial but i just want to tell you how much i love my buttermilk this is from a local creamery and they're not they don't support me at all <laughs> i just love it though it's uh, a dairy about um, 10, 15 miles from here, and they sell it at my little store down the road. And um, this is whole milk buttermilk from whole cow's milk. Um, it's grade A, and um, it's not, um, it's just real buttermilk. <laughs> it's so good. It's really thick and beautiful. I use it for baking and also for making salad dressings and stuff. It's just really, really good. It's um, Mills River Creamery, and it's um, right down the road from us, and it's just wonderful. You'll see when I pour it in how nice and thick it is. So, what I'm going to do is put the lid back on. I'm gonna pour it down the chute. I'm gonna pour like about a little more than 90%, 80% of it in. See how thick it is. The texture of this it's almost ready it's just almost there it's starting to stick together it's really it's really wet still um, but it's almost there I'm, if 
think actually I don't need to add any more milk. So the next thing we're going to do, put a little flour on the board and we're going to put it out on there. I don't think we need more milk, really. Let me just kind of pull this around here. And I think we're going to be fine. sure you have a good view here. Yeah, this is perfect. See how it's just barely making the little ball, but it's still really, really, really soft. That's what you want. You do not want it to be doughy. You don't want it to be anything like red or pie dough or anything. You want it to be really wet and that's what it is. It's very sticky. Exactly right. It's really, really sticky but that's exactly what we want. you have a good view of it. All right, so we've got a little flour here. And we're just going to very, very lightly push it down. Biscuits are very tender things. You don't want to overdo them. So I'm not really going to Knead it. I'm just gonna. Oh, here comes my biscuit. My dog's name is Biscuit. Hi, Biscuit. <laughs> Her little tail's a wagging really fast. Um, you don't really want to knead them at all. But you want them to stick together, obviously. So I'm just gonna kind of pat it, and it will stick. You almost don't even have to roll it. I will roll it a little bit to get it out there. Hi, Biscuit. You being a good girl? Yes, you are. I wish I could show you, everybody. My hands are very messy. Let me see. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Biscuit, biscuit, come back here. Come back here. Biscuit, over here. Over here. Say hi, biscuit. Say hi. Say hello. Hi. Not behaving very well, and I don't want to get my camera, my uh, tripod, any more doughy. So, anyway. Back to our dough. Let me find it here. <laughs> okay, so I will roll it just a little bit. And actually, it's good to let it rest just a bit. But see how these little cracks are here? We're going to roll it just a bit. If you could feel this, it's so soft. It's like, you know how this, they say soft as a baby's butt? It's like softer than that. It's so, 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 so soft. And I like my biscuits pretty thick. So I'm not going to roll it out much thicker than that anyway. And I'm just going to let it rest for a minute. 
because I'm of the school that doughs, once they're made, need to kind of, kind of pull into themselves. And um, so I'm just gonna let it rest for a minute. I'm gonna put a towel over it. And then we'll come back and cut the biscuits and put them in the pan. Meanwhile, I'm gonna put the oven on 420. That's my oven and my heat. You might want it 425 for your oven. And if you're using a convection oven, 400. Now we're ready to cut these biscuits and get them in the oven. Just a tiny bit. Now, you can make different size with the sizes of biscuits if you want. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to use this larger one just because it's my personal preference. And as far as the pan goes, that's your personal preference too. So you can use a iron skillet. If you have a 9 inch or 10 inch skillet, that would be perfect. If you have any larger, uh, the biscuits won't touch each other and then they'll be a little crispier. And if that's the way you like your biscuits, that's fine too. I have a 12 inch skillet. That's the only one I have and I use it all the time for everything. So I'm not gonna use it for my biscuits. I have another pan besides this cake pan that I use for biscuits as well, but I'm gonna use this cake pan today. So that's probably the preferred thing to use is a nine inch cake pan. So let me just tell you, you wanna try and get them as close as you can because every time you have to mash this dough back up, your biscuits are gonna be a little tougher. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but it's really true. Now see here, I'm gonna get one biscuit out of here, but it's not gonna be perfect. I'd rather do that than have to mash them back up. So um, if you have seen Callie's Biscuits, they're in Atlanta and Greenville and Charleston. My friend Carrie owns that company. She makes hers about this big. And she t snuggles them all up in a big baking pan. And um, she makes hers a little differently. She uses cream cheese in hers. But she does use White Lily. I've been to her biscuit house. I I I've been there when she was just getting, well, not just getting started. She just had one little store. Uh, she was mostly mail order at the time. And, and, and um, see how gently I'm doing this? She was mostly in grocery stores and doing mail order, and she had just opened her very first storefront in Charleston, oh, Callie's Hot Biscuits, which is really small. And she has a motorhome that she drives around, the biscuit mobile. All right, so I'm gonna toss this, and it's gonna fit in the middle. I'm gonna make it fit. But anyway, her biscuits are delicious. That You can buy them frozen in uh, many gourmet stores and all Harris Teeters have them. Um, they're about, I think $15 for a dozen. And like I said, they're, a de they're this size. So a dozen or small. And they're really good though. You can um, serve them with ham. They're just really nice little biscuits. And now I think she has two locations in Atlanta and one in Greenville as well as the um, location in Charleston, which unfortunately with the COVID virus is probably closed for the moment, but maybe not because it's mostly takeout. They're really tiny little stores. But anyway, go see um, well, you won't be able to see Carrie there because she has people that work for her, but go get a little hot biscuit anytime you're in those towns. They're really good. So these are ready to go in. You don't put anything on them until you take them out. And then you just take a stick of butter and you go around the top. So I'm going to go put them in the oven and we're going to 
turn them at six minutes. I told you the temperatures already. If my, my personal oven, I use 420. And if you have a convection oven, which I do have a convection oven, I'm just not using it. Um, you would put it at 400. And 425, if you have a regular conventional oven, I just think that's a little hot for my personal taste. So, it's not, five degrees isn't a big deal. I just keep my eye on them. So, you keep your eye on them. At six minutes, you turn them, and then let them go another six minutes, five minutes, and they should be nice and puffy and golden brown by then. So, I'll see you when they're ready. Okay, here they are. Hot out of the oven. So, we'll just add a little butter. And then in a few minutes, we'll cut one open and put some butter on it and taste it. How was that for easy? All this butter on the top sinks down inside, makes a nice coating on it. Okay. I'm gonna take one out. And we'll put some butter on it in just a second. How about this big one in the middle? The reason why the one in the middle, although it was a little thicker, came out so nicely was because it was touching all the rest. See, it's nice and perfectly steamy. Perfectly cooked inside. Look at all that steam rising up. I have some homemade jam, but I don't think at this point in time anything's better on it than butter. I'm going to go give this to my husband. So, I imagine he'll eat it. I don't think he'll turn it away. So, I hope you take this advice and go make yourself some good old fashioned biscuits, the fast and easy way, with buttermilk and flour and butter. See you soon. Make sure and subscribe if you haven't yet.